we'll uh, we'll get the theme song added in post production because that's just how we're gonna roll tonight, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to your new look open lines on a Friday night here on your Liberty Radio. It is April 19th in the year of our clownishness, 2024. I am the Drizzle. Uh, We are here to take your calls. It is your chance to be a part of Liberty Radio. Let us know. What is on your mind tonight? The link is in the Liberty Radio Telegram channel. It's in the announcement on the Grand Theft World Forum, and it has been uh, carefully disseminated to other dark corners of the interwebs as well. As you might guess, uh, reigning champion Rob is our first caller tonight. I mean, surprise, right, Rob? It's like you're always here yeah. to kick off the show. It's it's becoming a habit. It's becoming a tradition, right? That's what I meant. It's becoming a tradition. That's yeah, a better got, way to put it. I get a little flack on the home front, but uh, yeah, I enjoy this on Friday nights. Oh, really? Talking, talking some shit about the world. Oh, yeah? Are they, uh, they giving you flack because you're talking crazy conspiracy theories with strangers on the internet? Oh, no, no, just my time, you know. Yeah. It's end of the week. Everybody's worked hard. At so, least in uh, normie land, because you, you got to balance the, uh, the two. So how Sometimes. do you balance the two, Rob? I've always been well, curious about that. Well, I just, uh, you know, go to work every day and... Uh, do my job as a corporate slave and I uh, have found that it's easier to go along with the uh, crowd and pay my taxes. Although this last week, cause I'm a last minute kind of guy. Uh, when I was filling out my taxes, I was feeling a little salty, you know, paying more a year than I used to make uh, in federal wage tax. It's like, it should feel good, but, uh, at the same time, then I started thinking about property taxes and sales taxes and, you know, breathing taxes and all the other fucking taxes and thought that maybe I get like 50% at the end of the year of what I actually make. Wow. Is and it then, down to 50% now? Yeah. And I go to drive to work and I you know hit potholes on 30 year old roads that haven't been paved uh, as long as I can remember. I mean, I hate to be the fucking old cranky guy, but what the fuck, man? I thought that was their whole uh, promise to us was that they were going to pave the roads for us. And without government, <laughs> we, wouldn't have, we wouldn't have paved roads. And the, the police wouldn't, uh, there wouldn't be police there to protect you. Apparently, they're just uh, the people you call to report after, if you're still alive, after the incident, you give them a call. And That's they'll right. File a, they'll file a report, and then yeah. they'll never hear from them again. Yeah. Well, they'll they'll decide if you should be charged with anything, uh, and and if it is even worth their time to do that. You know, because with those guys, if it's not the low hanging fruit, they're probably just moving on to the next call. Because they have that luxury, they get to cher- cherry pick. You know what they do and don't want to prosecute. Based on you know what it's gonna do for their career. Yeah, they're dirty motherfuckers. Even in like a low, little small town, uh, New Jersey, my oldest son got pinched by the police for trying to distribute the devil's lettuce back when he was a teenager before it was legal. And they uh, they went on their Facebook page and put our home address on there with his name, um, announcing the charges. It's like, well, that's really fucked up wow they did that to a juvenile uh i think he had just turned 18 i mean he was he he, but i remember the crime log my whole life they would put the town you lived in if you if someone got arrested but never your actual home address well it it depends like i remember in my hometown in the newspaper they would have the the police blotter 
and you could see like who had been fucked up, got arrested, you know, thrown in the drunk tank, whatever. And I think I do remember them actually putting like people's street address, maybe not the like the exact house number, but they were like, you know, so and so was from the 600 block of Hillside Terrace and in, in this little locality. I, I like, do God rem- damn, that's kind of specific. I do remember that, but this was like the specific uh, house address. Yeah. I mean, so. They put like the, the Google Maps photo up there with the street view and everything. Like, this is what it fucking looks like. Showed my car in the driveway, me, yeah. me cutting, cutting the grass kind of thing. Yeah. I don't know. Bastards. But uh, to to walk that line, I don't know. I, I've never been the person to like keep my mouth shut, so I, I always add little things in here and there. But people don't take it as inflammatory because I'm not a racist. I'm not someone who's like uh, one political party or the other. Uh, of course, when you disagree with people who are partisan, they seem to. Think that's when you it. become racist. Yeah. Yeah, that's when you yeah, yeah. You become all kinds of names. I took a lot of flack. Um, from certain people during the whole COVID thing, because no, I, yeah, I I kind of made a, I, I I did some grandstanding on a town hall meeting with uh, 400 people in the IT department, and I uh, I asked them if I should resign down so I could get paid out my vacation because typically they had a, a policy where if you you know, quit and take another position. As long as you give like four weeks notice, they'll pay you out up to four weeks of your banked vacation time. So I was asking, should I resign now so I can get paid? Or uh, are you guys going to pay me out my vacation when you fire me for not getting the COVID shot? And I got a a call from the vice president shortly after that and told me I had a bright future and wouldn't I just reconsider? And it's like, no, I'm just, I, this is my line in the sand. I'm not taking experimental uh, vaccines. I am a divorced, a divorced father of three. I have kids, like, if I die because it doesn't work out for me, what am I going to do or if I'm disabled? So I, you know, applied for my religious exemption and they accepted it, so... I got a promotion after that too. So it's not uh well, I mean, the boss said you had a bright future, so I would expect you would have gotten a promotion. What are I they going to do? Right? Hold, hold you back from a promotion because uh, you, you didn't take an experimental gene therapy injection that technically wasn't forced upon you. Yeah. They, uh, they had me do, do the job for free for four months before I got it. So it wasn't without a uh, trial period. Well, that was nice of you. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people wouldn't be willing to do that. It was uh, one of those situations where uh, during COVID, a lot of people were leaving because they decided that uh, we, we had been like fully remote and they had like a back to work plan that was three days in the office and people started leaving in mass. So I got like a couple of raises just by like sitting, holding my cards because <laughs> I guess I was valued. And uh, so that kept me hanging around. It's the best job I've ever had, to be honest, as far as working for somebody. Nice. And it sounds like yeah. the pay is good. So, uh, yeah. Pay's great. Vacation, th- 33 days a year, like just like a good Illuminati or Mason. <laughs> whatever way you want to take it right i i i take full advantage of it oh shit i would too man i always did i was like what paid vacation how, right. how long do i have to be here before i can start taking it that was always my first question there's there's no politics in it it's all about what i know you know the technology so good well that's the way it should be like with any job but Unfortunately, that's not the world uh, we exist in. We live in a cartoon uh, called Clown World. And unfortunately, these days, it seems it's more about what you're willing to virtue signal to than what you actually know or can accomplish. 
Well, I, I don't know how long that kind of thing can go. I mean, it's the, the cultural Marxism in, in like Middle East countries when they're in a hurry, they pull the color revolution. This is like the slowest color revolution in the history of color revolutions right now. It's the every color revolution. That's why it's taking so long. They have to cycle through the entire Crayola box, you know? Well, some people want to live as cats now. Like, you know, go for it. Just I, stay out <laughs> of my neighborhood. I, I've heard the story like multiple times from different angles about, you know, elementary school teachers who have been confronted with a kid who wants to be a cat and they want a litter box at the back of the room. Like, is that, I mean, I know the people have told me the story. Like, <laughs> yeah, apparently it's real. Cause I've, I've heard the story a couple different times now at least and and out of like different countries even like one was out of britain one was out of canada i think which i know I, it, demographically speaking isn't all that different uh from one another but you know they're till still technically separated geographically i don't know i got three kids nine nieces and nephews like i just don't say it <laughs> What what kind of indulgence are you giving your kid when uh, you, you want your kid to know that they could be anything they put their mind to, but an animal really isn't what we were talking about. It's never been a problem with amongst any of them. So mm. 12, 12 kids, but it's a different generation, I guess. At the, it's at the end of this craziness that's going on now. I, I can't even begin to imagine what kind of world these kids are going to be living in. I really can't. Uh, who's going to build it? I, I have no idea because nobody wants to be a uh, tradesperson anymore. Like, yeah. So, I mean, who's going to be, who's going to be handling all the plumbing? You know, who's, who's going to be handling uh, rewiring faulty electric lines? You know, I, I, who's, who's going to be installing the, the fucking uh, Internet into new construction? Well, you've seen the uh, Tesla robot can handle an egg, right? <laughs> we're not talking about uh, fine cuisine, Rob. We're, we're talking about hardwiring a house for fucking fiber now. Well, I, I have a feeling that... Uh, DARPA's technology that uh, they're hiding, that the, the oligarchs who run this shit um, are very aware of the projects going on there. They, they wouldn't be trying to eliminate a large part of the population uh, if they didn't have some backup plan. But who knows? They've totally fucked education and uh, dumbed down this country as much as they possibly could, just systematically. I, I don't know like what they're doing in their gate programs other than brainwashing kids and pulling them into the, the whole machine. But what, what are they doing with all the talent in this country? You surely can't uh, invent all anything. The what? All the what the, in this country? <laughs> the intellectual talent. Uh, is there any left? Uh, I, I'm sure, pretty, pretty sure. I, I, I honestly don't know. I mean, even even looking, I mean, there are, there are people out there, right? There are people who have been able to escape the indoctrination to one degree or another, you know, and, and actually start to like work on their own and create things and, and develop ideas and all of that good stuff. Well, but we're all still like, you know, buttonholed and data siloed. You know, we each of us exists in our own little echo chamber. So it's the the real work is figuring out how to break outside of that so that you can actually reach other people. Absolutely. It's uh it's a slow process. People 
want to uh, fit in is what they teach you. That's what the uh, schooling teaches you. Fit in or be ostracized. You'd be the weird person that nobody talks to and makes fun of. I, I have a... I, I mean, I, I haven't been in school in many, many years, but I'm sure it, it's, it's still the same thing. Um, they still ostracize people. And maybe those are the people who are like turning to, uh, you know, pretending like they're gender neutral or whatever. Or maybe it's all the chemicals they're throwing in shit that are really making kids gender uh, confused. I don't know. It's hmm. a it's cra crazy world we're living in. Sure is how poisoning the shit of it out of everybody. Yeah, they are. All right, so we've had we've had Yona join in. Can we get a sound check from the Yona? I'm actually curious to see how this works. Huh. That's, that's Let me strong. see. I wonder a if it's strong. All right, I can see him. I can't hear. Ah, I know why I can't hear him yet. All right, so we have to. I can hear him. You can hear him? I can't. Yeah. I can't hear him. I can't see him. I can both. But I think I know why. All right, so we're going to go there. All right, how about he... now? Is it because he's dumping out some dirt? There we go. All right, I'm Stuff starting. I'm it. starting to figure this out, ladies and gentlemen. Was that dirt weed he was dumping dumping out of that baggie? I hope not. Probably, definitely not. To find out more, fuck around. All right. Sounds like he's got some new effects he's brought with him. Oh yeah, I got a whole bag of tricks, son. Papa's got a brand new bag. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, this is going to get really interesting when we have the fourth person join in because I, I don't have that set up yet. Maybe I can do that while I'm waiting. That might be a good idea. Is there some like buttons you got to push on your end to get them all? In uh, line? It... So there's, there's uh, 12 people total, including myself, that can be a part of any stream. Okay. Uh, I think what I have to do is... Each time a new person joins, because I already have two set up, obviously. So each time a new person joins, I would have to set up them individually with their own shot and audio and all of that sort of stuff. But like these two channels, me and Yona had set up previously. Yeah. So I could hear him. I could hear him and say him as he came in. Right. But I couldn't and the audience couldn't because I hadn't assigned him to a source yet. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Or maybe the audience could hear him. I don't know. I couldn't hear him. Huh. Well, well, welcome, Yona. <laughs> Good to see you, Rob. What's going on, homie? Too much. <laughs> Enjoying a good night here in uh, well, the woods of southern, southern New Jersey. Definitely don't want you to get bored. Uh, let's see here. So what what is on your mind tonight, Rob? Well, um, we got this whole uh, fake World War III breaking out. So I'm wondering what you guys think about Israel um, responding to a, <laughs> to to something that was in response to a, you know uncalled for attack from them in the first place. It's like, I punched you in the nose, and then you punched me back, so now I feel like I can beat you up and feel justified kind of thing. I'm, I'm not sure. But as, as the Israel these days, nobody's really sure what's going on. Well, I, I can tell you what's going on, man. I, I, uh, I, I got a hold of some wedding cake again. and um, Oh, nice. All right, I, I'll tell you how good this weed is. You know, normally I when I go to a uh, remix song, you know, um, hmm. I can tell what kind of weed I'm smoking whenever I, got I go back. I some super cake the other day. Oh, fuck yeah. 
the uh, instant fucking choke, instant buzz. It's like sledgehammer to the head, right, yeah. Frank Pelosi? Anyways, um, so you know, I was thinking about making a new song, and I kept dreaming about tacos and cheese and sour cream and guacamole and beef and the beans and the fucking the sauce, all that shit, man. And like, I started hearing the fucking dong, dong, the fucking, you know what I mean, Rob, the fucking Taco Bell sound, right? Gong, gonging in my fucking head, man, dreaming about tacos. I was like, shit, man, I need to make a Taco Bell song. Bruh, I got the fucking munchies. And I'm like, and it's got to have bruh in it. It's got to say bruh with Taco Bell sound. And next thing you know, two hours later, I'm finally logging on here, made another fucking Detroit house masterpiece. And it all started with the fucking Taco Bell song. And You didn't need to add the, the, the disclaimer. May not, may not actually include meat. It's beef like it's beefy. It's uh, well, if if you ever read in this story about them getting sued for not uh, having real meat in their stuff, there's like a standard apparently on the market that if it's less than fifty percent actual beef, then it doesn't count as meat, and they were below the standard apparently. So what does it count as? It is a oh. beefy filling. It's called. Taco Bell beefy filling with a Y, which means it's beef-like, it's beefish. It possesses certain beef-like characteristics. Um, ask uh, Texas Slim. Oh, it has it beef. has beef qualities. I think is what yes. you're saying. Yes, it's, it's a simulacrum it, of true beef. Anyway, yeah, it's all fat and filler and whatever chemicals they want to put in. I guess vegetable protein, lots of vegetable protein, Fla a lot of flavoring. Don't forget about that uh, vegetable soy protein, because uh, yeah, that's the, uh, uh, well, I would say GMO, but I think it's uh, made with bioengineered ingredients now. They've changed the nomenclature. Probably addictive mm. chemicals. Yeah, it is bioengineered. That's what they're using now. Right. It's the same as like all these uh, spam emails I get from like classmates.com. Although every now and then I'll get like weird comments back from um classmates i was telling drizzle earlier yeah you got one fun. earlier today didn't you yeah <laughs> actually come to think of it it's really um, fucked up when you get it and you were homeschooled by your mom right yeah well i, I think that's how macron hooked up anyways um <laughs> manuel macron president of france but yeah so i got this message from uh my classmate here now i, I i'm not going to name any names and fortunately or actually, I should say, I will send send me his name. I'll name him. Um, unfortunately, it's become an all too common occurrence. Um, but uh, let me see here. Go back to the phone. Um, Did you get lost? Ah, here it is. Here it is. Uh, okay. So I look down and it's like, uh, hey, homies. Just got back from the hospital. Oh, well, how's redacted? Oh, well, I didn't have a stroke. Bell's palsy, what I had. My face. I can't even talk, and my left eye will not close without tape up. Um, but at least he got the fact. So, um, well, at least he didn't have a stroke. Stayed in touch. Yeah. Yeah, just, that's good he news. Got, he just got the beaver face. It's all good. And another yeah. one, DJ Khaled. That's four now. Four I know of that's got that die five popping eye. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know you knew so many Bieber fans. Yeah. I'm telling you, man, Popeye like a can of fucking spinach, man. It's crazy. All this sequelae, all this um, side effecting going on here. Well, all right. So. Back to the question Rob asked. You know, because we do get sidetracked from time to time. But we're doing pretty good on time tonight. Um, oh, my bad. No, nah, it's all good. That's why we're here. Uh, 
What the fuck even happened? Like, so, so last night, we, well, the were, news? we were doing yeah, the, the show, right? And, and you yeah. sent in the link. You're like, hey, man, ABC News is reporting this. And I'm like, hold what? What? They're reporting what? So then I go and find it and we put it on the air and like everybody does the same thing from what I could tell, <laughs> you know, like fucking everybody who knows how to work a goddamn stream was on. Oh, my God, it's World War Three starting. You know, people who don't even normally stream at like 10 o'clock at night were fucking streaming so that they could get some of that grift money. Some of the grifting, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and then wake up this morning. So I figure like, okay, everything's just going to start going to hell now. Wake up this morning, turn on AM Wake Up, and Steve's like, uh, Iran is saying, nah, son. None of that shit. None, none of it happens. All fake. Well, I, I also saw that they shot down all the stuff that was incoming. So, uh, But, so, I, like, were, were there attacks or weren't there attacks? That's my question. Like, did any of it actually happen, or are we just being, like, severely mind-fucked? Uh, well, there, there were attacks, and the deadline to file was four days ago, unfortunately. The, the CIA, um, through ABC News, said that Syria, uh, Iraq, and Iran had been attacked in a retaliation even though apparently Iran had only sent their retaliation that a military base, right? Wasn't that the story? Initially, they were saying it was a Tel Aviv. And- oh, well, yeah, it depends on who you ask. I mean, shit, I saw a video of rockets over Al-Aqsa Mosque. So, I mean, it just it depends on your news source and, you know, uh, how I'm much so, of a I'm, fantasy world you live in. I'm surprised those Iranian missiles didn't, had at least 40 Iranian or uh, Israeli babies and rape a couple of their women while they were at it. Well, you know, there is something that did happen the other day. Rather interesting. Um, You know, just in terms of strategy, I think the more people look into how um, Iran has played their cards and what cards they've pulled, uh it's really and i'm not trying to buff the nuts or fluff the tehran cock here i'm just giving credit where it's due it's been phenomenal fucking strategy so let me give a specific example okay when we talk about the remaining lands uh populated with palestinian arabs be they christian muslim or jew um it's basically in two sections although the west bank being one of them and the gaza strip being the other the west bank itself is not even in one contiguous section anymore as it's been crisscrossed and cut up into zone a zone b zone c and then it's got these highways cutting through it and it's just been eat all up with um illegal settlement but nonetheless the gaza strip borders egypt on one side the west bank known as the West Bank because it's the West Bank of the, drumroll please, Jordan River. And on the other side of the Jordan River is a country named James Jordan. There you go. Uh, Main city is Amman or Amman. And there he is. Um, So, uh, obviously, there's scores of Palestinians, which that's a lot. I just like using the old word. Scores. Um, yeah, 20. Scores. The score is 20. How many, how many score? Um, Isn't well, it? Uh, is about million? 40, yeah. 40 score scores is 20. 15 harems ago. Check Something with the like camel. That. Yeah. Um, so anyways, uh, you know, you've got a massive refugee population of Palestinians that have stepped across the Jordan River from the West Bank over to Let's call it the East Bank. I don't know. Anyways, now, Jordan, or as they say, uh, Urdun, um, it's under a rule of a monarch, right? And there's been some language by the Queen has come out, made some disparaging remarks against the Zionist aggression. But 
when Iran sent their salvo of all their junk, old drones and everything else, basically flacking the skies over Israel. And then Israel showed where all of their defenses are. I think there was um, one guy who was describing uh, the missiles that they used. It cost them about $9,800 a missile, basically $10,000 a missile to build it, launch it, and fire it. And in order to send up interceptor missiles with the Iron Dome, Boeing, Raytheon, American-Israeli super fireworks in the sky, they're not just, I mean, they could just send one uh, million and a half dollar missile to shoot down the $10,000 rocket, but they always send at least two Usually three. And so if now, I, if I was giving them to you, you know what I'm saying? If I was giving them to if I was giving them to you for free, Yona, how much would it cost you to launch those missiles? <laughs> but I mean the thing of it is four and a half million dollars expended to take out ten thousand dollars worth of Iranian tin can from the bottom of their heat when they've got hypersonic missiles. Yeah, they, they and have defense for it. there is no American nor Israeli defense for hypersonic missiles. They just basically flack the fucking skies, and in the process, as some it's, of those drones and some of those missiles happen to cross over, um, I'm going to call it Jordanian airspace. Uh, check me on that, Snopes. Jordanian that was, airspace. That- that was going to be my next question. Iraqi and Jordanian airspace. Right. Did but they get, the thing did they of it get, is. Did they get permission? No. Iraq let the missiles fly because Iraq was firing missiles of their own. But when the Iranian drones and missiles went into the. Uh, again, I'm going with Jordanian airspace. The Jordanians attacked them and shot them down to help defend Israel. And then all of a sudden, oops. Oh, shit. The Jordanian monarchy um, kind of seriously just fucked up. What would they do now? Seriously just fucked up. That's a serious fuck up. By intervening, you're saying? By by buying it, showing that they're a Zionist? was the only country in the entire Middle East that jumped to the defense of Israel when Iran sent their junk drones and missiles. Everyone else let them fly. And Jordan was defending Israel and shot down the Iranians thing as much as they could in Jordanian airspace. With the help of, you know, we have an American... Oh, where did I hear that? Well, yeah. the, I've heard it. Uh, let me see. I've heard a lot I of shit, think, Yona, but if I can't uh, get a source. Now, a it, I mean, it falls it in line with Jordan. Now, like they, I, they act I'm not all tough, it didn't but they're I have sources. Pussies. Uh, George Galloway was discussing that on the Mother of All talk shows. Oh, he can't be trusted. About the Jordan thing. He and blocked then, us uh, on Twitter. Fuck that guy. And then Mohammed Morandi from the University of Tehran. Then you think everybody should be masked and uh, forced vaccinated? He was talking about that. Not sure the guy on uh, Al Manar Network there out of Lebanon, but they were talking about that. How how did they check in with Al Jazeera to see what they're saying about it? But it's a big fucking deal on two levels. Let just uh, hang on, just one second. Uh, Let me explain what's going on here, okay? Traditionally in the Middle East, there was a huge fucking rift between Shia and Sunni, and and it was exacerbated and aggravated, antagonized by you know the Anglo-American muscle out there with you know MI6 and CIA and the rest of them. Now, um, as a result, there was already a sort of a rapprochement between Iran and, for example, diplomatic relations were established between the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and Iran, and things were kind of falling out. Now, all of a sudden, 
after six months of nonstop live stream genocide in uh, uh, Gaza, in the, in the Gaza Strip, it's Iran, the fucking Shias, who are now the fucking hero in all of the fucking Muslim world. They're fighting the big Satan and the little Satan and seriously kicking ass. And in the eyes of the Arab, you know, folks walking up and down on the sidewalk, you know, the voice of the street, the box wow. populi. Um, and now, and now, in terms of my sources for Jordan helping to defend Israel, that really shouldn't come as any surprise to most Americans that are aware geopolitically of what's going on in the Middle East, because Egypt and Jordan. Um, more so than Turkey, are very much in a memorandum of understanding type relationship with the U.S. military. Very much so. I mean, you look at all the F-16s in the Jordanian Air Force, and where the fuck they get that? I mean, we do a lot of business with Amman. That, I'm talking when I say we, I'm talking about American defense contractors. The most sure. expensive junk you can buy on the planet because it's first, first off lucky. on that what what has iran ever done to the world to make anybody think that they're an aggressive uh you know hostile force other than mind their own fucking business and stay you know within their area well they did be... kind of aggressively overthrow the uh british imposed shaw of iran well yeah i mean that was imposed on them <laughs> right but, yeah other other than you know from the, from the western view that's that's why it's uh you know supposedly one of the evil countries because uh the u.s doesn't have their grips on that middle eastern country that has oh oil. shit wow is that is that taboo to say that no no it, ju it just dawned on me son of a bitch i played world war three live and <laughs> studio at the end thinking this is it folks it's world war three and apparently it's not i got some george, world war three blue balls now man then, then, then you got george galloway that motherfucker how, how, how do you recycle somebody who's that much of a clown and have him be relevant to you know shove out in front of the media now, now he's talking about tyrannical government really you, you wanted everybody to be either injected or fired or you know but I can relate. To, I, can re I can really, really relate to George Galloway. He wears glasses like me to read, and he's got a fucked up grill like me. Although that's funny, he's got better taste than mail order brides, and I prefer to go the IRL well. But anyway, who's his MI6 handler? That's all I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm such an asshole. Fuck. Man. Well, uh... world's worst critic. According, I mean, it's terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But according to the CBC, Yona, you are 100% correct. Uh, why Jordan and maybe even Saudi Arabia helped defend Israel. <laughs> this the was, States. Uh, yeah, this was wow. posted on April 18th. So yesterday. Yesterday's news. Yeah, and it says when Iran launched its barrage of drones and missiles against Israel over the weekend, they ran into interference from one or two unlikely sources. The reasons why Jordan and reportedly Saudi Arabia helped thwart the attack are varied, complex, and perhaps self-serving, observers say. I tell you, I for one am shocked. That's that's interesting. Like Jordan has every right. It was over their airspace, regardless if it was in defense of Israel or just defense of their country. You're launch if you're launching missiles over their country and you're not or drones and you're not asking for their permission. That's an act of war, isn't it? I think it used but to be. It, it used to be. You, I, I remember, uh, you know, the U.S. always getting other countries permission before launching their cruise missiles over them <laughs> but you see again we're playing cards here gentlemen and iran could have and did route many a drone and <laughs> missile around jordan 
and just through Syria to get there. So again, why would they deliberately route drones through Jordanian airspace unless they knew here's a chance to bluff them out of their holes and they bit and they defended Israel much to the horror of about 99.975% of their entire fucking native population, which was like, I, 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 what? Because the uh, jo- the Jordanian monarchy has maintained the whole time, oh, no, 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 we're not a puppet state of the United States. No, 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 we do what we want. And then, it, just think back just recently, Bob, right. there was actually some American service members who were allegedly injured in an attack and they were at a military base in Jordan. And then there was all this wishy-washy stuff. Well, I was actually right by the border, technically in Jordan, but right by the border with Jordan. And blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, it, it, it's been an open secret that the United States military does whatever the fuck they want in Jordan. Yeah, for decades. Yeah. So then, um, Saudi for Arabia. Decades. That's I, I, was that even secret. in question? I, I I know that it goes back further to um, you know the Rhodes Roundtable, but like if you read the book The Devil's Chessboard and the creation of the CIA and oh yeah, the tentacles that it created, all the people and what well, they hell, this goes all the way back the to the Sykes Pico agreement, you know, where they where they cut up yeah. the Levant, yeah. when they chopped up Syria and said, all right, we're going to get our yeah, spies back at the over end of here. World War One. Yep, to install this royal family, we'll get our other spies to go down there and install these fucking Wahhabi nut bags, and then next thing you know, we'll have this motherfucker all caught up, uh, all cut up into pieces and balkanized, and then we can just keep squeezing it by the balls, recrusating this motherfucker with some Zionist type shit, you know, which as we know far predates the Balfour Agreement. You go back all the way to the Palestine Exploration Fund and the City of London and what was it, 1836 or something? Predates the fucking American Civil War. The yeah, Zionist something, Project. Something I've heard since I was a kid, Yona, was that whoever it is you cannot criticize is the one who's in control. Boom. And they've always been the third rail of U.S. government politics. That's the third rail you do not touch. You don't fuck with Israel or, you know, the pictures get out. So the videos my, come out. my only question is, when are we going to put a bill in front of Congress to officially make Jordan uh, one of these United States? <laughs> you know, like well, we did with Hawaii. Yeah. I mean, it seems more it's better for optics if they pretend. I mean, well, that's pretty it, much what Bahrain, isn't it? Isn't the entire naval fist plate stationed out of Bahrain? Something like I that, mean, yeah. Take, take, I, mean, take, yeah, yeah. I, I knew a chick in high school uh, who spent, like, the the better part of her teenage years. I mean, she was a Mormon, so, like, how much fun was she really going to have? But um, she was in Bahrain for, like, a good five years because her father was with the military. She was pretty hot. I was, I was, I was going to say Guatemala. That was one of our first uh, CIA exploits. And then Iran. And then, you know, all over Central and South America. Yeah, and then we lost Iran. <laughs> like, yeah, oh, that's... fuck, we have to take it over again. There's, you know, it was they, actually... Um, they, I want to say they were so they were so angry about it that they started using them as a proxy to trade weapons yeah. and drugs. Is it not Danielle Ortega who is the long time socialist uh, in power in um, Nicaragua? Um, and there's been long discussion of a competitor canal across uh, the isthmus there. Uh, through Nicaragua and be uh, a competitor to the Panama Canal, uh, one of the pet projects of Daniel Ortega and uh, apparently China. Um, I don't know what's going on with that now, but nevertheless, uh, when you go back in the history of Nicaragua, I believe it was um, 
Harriman. Yes, Harriman. Yeah. Who got the choice fucking contracts to build rail lines and take over some narrow gauge rail there. Avril Harriman. He ended up, uh, yes, and he ended up building a railroad empire in Nicaragua. That son of a bitch. For the banana plantations, and that made Nicaragua the very first of its kind and a template that was then used on everywhere else known as the banana republic which you, you know talking about wrote, the, you talk, you're talking huh? about the serve the soviet um ambassador Ar- no, I, 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 no, 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 no i'm talking uh, about Admiral harriman uh, he was a uh, secretary of state he worked for uh, brown brothers uh he was like he was he was one of these little fucking renfields that yeah. rich is yeah, always talking he became, about he became the Soviet ambassador. Did he? Was he? The US oh, that's Soviet. right. He yeah. did. Oh shit! I'd forgotten about that. About that's right. Yeah, he was the go-between, the Bolsheviks. Yeah, he was. Um, I mean, he was. He was like a. a... He, he was the guy who re uh, who um, brought the people back who knew how to uh, run the factories after they shot all the factory. Yeah, but he was like he was a predecessor to Dulles. Well, in fact, I think Harriman was involved with the building of some of the rail line between St. Petersburg and Moscow, because uh, for those that aren't aware, the United States actually invaded Russia and occupied it. (laughs) In case you didn't know, uh, I don't know of any time when Russia actually invaded and occupied the United States ever. Uh, Maybe Alaska, but. Again, yeah, Irish. not really. No, no, nothing on the order of uh, the entire fucking U.S. military marching into Moscow and taking shit over. Uh, that happened. Anyway, what? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, uh, Sorry, I'm getting the celebration we... started a little early. I know it's tomorrow. That's the holiday, not today. But I just said, fuck it. I mean, you you were aware of the American occupation of Russia there. Was it like 1917? 17? 17 through 1921 or like three, four years long. We were occupying a lot of places back then. Haiti, Dominican Republic, yeah, Cuba. But I mean, we, we threw the Bolsheviks uh, some funding and... Uh, probably some weapons and said here go to your worst we we need a uh counter to what we're doing yeah we, we funded the white army which ended up being the washington generals versus the harlem globe trotters harlem globe trotters would be the red army of course and um red army still around the white army um well just like whites today Public enemy number one. I got wiped out. Uh, it, you know, it reminds me of that time we were backing the Azov Battalion in the Ukraine, and they got wiped out. Yeah. Well, I, I guess there's some yeah. of them left. You know, that they've still got um, teenagers and uh, retirees to draft from. The neo Nazis. That's right. Those guys. A lot of billions of dollars. Good times. Wash down the drain with them. I just remember Jake and Elwood Blues. After, you know, he had just gotten them out of the joint and he picks them up in a fucking old police car and they're driving across Chicago from Joliet back into town and they get up by Cicero and there's Illinois Nazis protesting on the bridge because they won a court case to write the protest. And, uh, uh, you know, do you, do you think uh, Zelen- the do Blues you, uh, Brothers? And so Elwood, played by Dan Aykroyd, turns to John Belushi, Jake Elwood. He's like, "Ask these, you know, Illinois Nazis, tell them all that." Jake says, "Nazis, I hate oh. Nazis." And so fucking Elwood stomps on the gas, plows right over that bridge. All them fucking Nazis jump out, but they got his license. Plate leads to a big finale at the end between the Blues Brothers versus the Nazis. For more, watch the fucking movie. Anyway, 
<laughs> so what were you saying, wow. Rob? Sorry about that, Rob. I <laughs> I lost my train of thought after that. I, I heard Zelensky come out of your mouth. Yeah, it's, there we go. I, I was wondering. I don't know why if, Zelensky was in your mouth, but. I, I'm wondering if that poor guy's cocaine uh, supplies have continued unfettered or if like that is like cut off with the rest like he doesn't seem to be getting i mean sean penn hasn't given him an oscar in a while he, he probably is seeming seen it's got to be I, I would figure if he wasn't getting a resupply of his nose candy because i mean we are talking about cokey smurf here right like he was on he, he, as far as I know, is still on what is probably going to go down in history as one of the most epic benders of all time, right? Yeah. Like, you think Hitler was on one? Oh, just wait. Just wait, because we I haven't can, seen the end of it yet. So I, I figure any- if he wasn't getting his resupply, we would be hearing about it. Like, he would be showing up in Congress and fucking pounding his fist on the dais. All right, so I have a challenge for everyone in the chats there across uh, Odyssey, Rumble, and elsewhere. Um, Twitter. How many, not pounds, we're going metric this time, universal measure. How many kilograms or grams, you can give your answer with KG or GM, how many kilograms since the Maidan coup of 2014 when Viktor Yanukovych was overthrown and replaced with um, Petra Poroshenko since that time, because at when that happened, uh, uh, Volodymyr Zelensky was uh, uh, an aspiring actor on Ukrainian television in 2014. Um, later on, would be on a show where he played the president. Now he is the president. So here's the question: Since that time in 2014, it's a long setup. We're basically talking about a 10-year period. How many kilos total? Oh shit. Of cocaine as Koki Smurf consumed in the past decade. Give your answers in the Rumble or Odyssey chat. Closest on one to the yeah. actual answer or on Twitter. Closest one to the actual answer on Twitter. That's right. Wins or the, even even for those of you watching the replay right now on BitChute or YouTube, you can play along too. Because you, you won't know any different. So it's fine. Go ahead and put your answer in the comments. Like good little sheeple. I mean, me personally, I've never done a whole lot of that stuff recreationally. So I, who knows if that's, if that's what you're doing to like be you, if that's your persona and you're like, keep it up. God only knows. You know, Rob, there is going to be one of those guys in the chat that's immediately like asking for rules and stuff. So just so we're clear, price is right. Rules apply to the bidding process so on the kilograms. Closest to the function. actual number without going over. That's what exactly. we're talking about. Okay. Yes. I'm going 33. Yes. 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 Yeah. Um, that's that was my final guess. answer. That was a lucky guess. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm going with 420 kilograms. No, yeah, I mean, one of us that's is going to be right. Drizzle, Fair. we're talking 10 years, man. 10 years of blowing. Do you know, do you know how much 33 kilograms is in, yeah, in terms of cocaine? Do you know how, how long much, it takes to do 33 kilograms of cocaine by yourself? How, how much could the heart actually take? Even That's what I'm power. talking about. You can't just like dive into it and try to start fucking knocking it out all in one day. You got to pace yourself. That's that's why exactly. Hunter Biden always has help. He, you know, Hunter Biden plays it smart. Hey, it's, I'm going to die it's Len bias. by myself. Let me get some whores up in here in the hot tub. That was too soon, Rob. <laughs> it was too soon. <laughs> that one still stings. It does. I don't know why. I was not a basketball fan. All I know is it was a tragedy, and I was childhood trauma. That's what it was. It was childhood Len trauma. Bias? Yeah, they 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 threw that on TV. That what, yeah, oh, it was face. all over TV, man. Yeah. I was like, who the fuck is this Len Bias? And why are we so sad that he's dead? He was like a number one pick, and he uh, took his money from the 
<laughs> for being, I, I don't know. He went and smoked crack yep. when he found out he was the number one pick. He did the uh, he did the Richard Pryor thing. Only he didn't make it to the ICU. I mean, usually the people who are uh, dependent on that money keep them alive. Like yo, 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 hold up, dude. Nah, million. Well, this was this was before, like, sports. Yeah, got he didn't have any really big and crazy with the money, and you have like entourages and all of that garbage. I think that was probably the beginning of it, though. Just about, yeah. Man, that was such a big deal because it was in the middle of a Maryland Terrapins game. I mean, it happened on the court. <laughs> no, it didn't. <laughs> when Len Bias fell out? Yeah, yeah he freaking, he had already graduated. It was his, It was after he got drafted. He was drafted by the Celtics, I think. And uh, I, why, do I, why am I thinking why, of a player that actually collapsed on the court? Because that's been happening a lot Wait, lately. No, 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 no. I'm talking about like 1983 NCAA men's basketball shorts that are literally higher than the bottom of the balls. You know, I mean, like, I'm way back. I mean, because it was in a game with Virginia Tech and Bimbo Coles was the point guard and Ralph Sampson was the center. I mean, this is like ACC basketball from like – 83, yeah, I don't know what, what game you're remembering, but you're uh, you're right uh, on the Ralph Sampson drop. <laughs> yeah. Go Hokies! That's Anyways. right. And a Hokie is a turkey, in case you were wondering. We, we have explained that before. If people need to understand it, they can uh, dive into the back catalog. There's like 200 episodes or something y'all can go and sift through. And that's kind of the difference between Blacksburg and Christiansburg. One's meth, the other's crack. You can do both in one day and yeah, so be right you, back on campus. Yeah. Anyway. What do, you th what do you think the next, uh, the next step is now that Israel's fake retaliation has uh, not gathered enough steam in the media? Do you think it's, it's time for the nuclear option? <laughs> mm, not yet. I know. Why, why don't they start an all-out assault on Rafa? There you go. I thought they were planning to do that anyway. Right. They're do that anyway. Yeah. But, but what, I don't think that happens till the 24th. Well, we got the sacrifice coming up on Monday. Right? So you can't have anything overshadow that. So whatever's, whatever it's going to be. And they've also been, they, they are displaying a pattern now where it's taking about, three four five days you know between salvos so it's whatever it is going to be it's not going to happen until like middle of next week yeah. but of course we got the sacrifice the big bloodletting on monday um and then they're going to blow up the mosque Al you know, alaska the, you think so? AXA, yeah oh yeah, 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 the yeah. they're going to do that they're going to do it is now saying pretty much in unison that, because Hamas is hiding um, there. <laughs> so, you know, the, the official sources are now actually saying that because the Palestinians in the Gaza Strip that were concentrated down by Rafah have now spread back out and retaken their homes in the middle and the northern parts of the Strips all the way up through Gaza City and Khan Yunis, which Drusel and I have discussed previously, right? I mean... As I'll take happened. your word for but, it. But now, like a week later, now the New York Times and WAPO and the rest are like, well, yeah, I mean, pretty much Israel has completely lost their offensive in Gaza. All the ground they took, they've lost. and They've had all these casualties, and they've pretty much completely withdrawn, and there's still Palestinians alive. So they didn't accomplish their full genocide yet. So well, Palestinians. I'll That's have the logic. You, Keep up with that logic if you can. It's, it's, I'll have you know, Yona, that in 2006, the last time there was an election, they voted for Hamas. Hamas, whatever you want to call them. So, they, <laughs> all, those, all those kids who weren't born <laughs> then. You know, it, got, it does make sense that them, they apparently. would. They're always going to vote for Hamas because they love the taste of chickpeas. <laughs> Or garbanzo mm -hmm. beans, same thing, same thing. 
Mm -hmm. Every way, mm -hmm. every way they've tried to justify their genocide just doesn't really cut it. They've tried name calling. They've tried, uh, you know, everything under the sun. Yeah, it but they haven't. They haven't stopped. They haven't they relented. Haven't, they, they're they haven't, just still doing whatever the fuck they want to do, and everyone's and you know, letting well, them get away this, with it. Well, all this bad shit's been happening to Hamas or Hamas or whatever it is in Gaza Strip. What the fuck is the other government over the West Bank doing? The falafel or whatever they're called. The Fanta. Fa or the PLO. There, there is PLO. no PLO. The PLO it, it, died got, with got, Yasser you got, Arafat. You got, uh, you've got Hamas in the Gaza Strip and you've got Fata in the West Bank, right? Well, I'm talking about the, the ruling political party. Last I checked, um, they were selling real estate over there for uh, Israeli settlements. Yeah. So I'm in not really sure Strip. what happened. Yeah, nah. New Yorkers <laughs> yeah. were buying fucking oh, oh, yeah. beachfront and, property. And beachfront property yeah, yeah jared kushner was bragging about that which shit. it's they're going to be really disappointed you know because climate change and everything it was <laughs> actually dumb people credit where it's due it was when i saw the clip of jared kushner bragging about all this new beachfront property opening up in the gaza strip for development yeah that's um, what i'm talking about that's what led me to go online and see if I couldn't find a tourism video to, of of Gaza to see, hey, did they, you know, if, they, if they've got all this beef on property, it's like a fucking Riviera, you know, surely to God they've got some, like, tourism videos of, like, this is where you go to sunbathe, and sure in the fuck do. And I found it, and I used it for uh, one of my latest um, Cypress Hill remixes or whatever. Um, I just can't remember what it's called now. Um, Chipped Seas. That's it. Chipped Seas. Yeah. Good old Cypress Hill. Good old Cypress Hill. Uh, fuck fake, man. Bro. Speaking of Cypress Hill. Oh, I've, I've, as soon as I get off the line here, I got to get hard at work on my uh, 420 at 420. Oh, Please, that's right. You're man. doing a show tomorrow, aren't you? Uh, well, technically, I'm doing a show in five hours from now. Oh, shit. I didn't because realize it was going to be that 420. I thought it was like 420 in the afternoon. No. Oh, wow. No. Yeah, I'll have to catch the replay on that one, dude. I'll be asleep. 420 No, this is the, this is the true... Techno, weed, drugs, rave mix on 420. Oh, yeah, because there's be only freaks are up at that hour. When you've already been doing glow sticks, I mean, you've been huffing Vicks Vapo Rub off your chest for at least three or four hours by that point. You can't feel anything left in your jaw. I mean, your jaws just have like Charlie horses throbbing. It looks like the legs on a, on a thoroughbred stallion in the sun just twitching. You know, you know, you know we only we out. only do drugs that the government has sanctioned that for us yeah. to say that they're okay. I don't know what kind of crazy Molly talk train, that is. Uh, I'm going to say you're Molly <laughs> Get get Molly fied with the Yoda at 4:20 in the fucking morning Eastern time, which well, isn't well, that bad on the West Coast drizzle. West Coast, it's at 1:20. I make sure I read my permits first before I partake in any kind of drug or alcohol or whatever it is as you should rob as as we were all trained in government school thank god the government thank god for the government right right always looking out for us rob remember that (laughs) you know what i haven't seen a lot lately is the uh the people doing those trank drugs. I, I used to see that all the time in downtown Philadelphia. Not anymore. No? You know, a special K I, or ketamine, that's actually a monkey tranquilizer. We always called special K monkey trank. No, we used to see them special all. K. 
used to see them all hang out on Market Street right. down by the uh, the building where uh, Thomas Jefferson wrote the yeah the, no know, there were dozens of and dozens of videos of Market Street going around the internet. Like it was, it was like a nightmare scene. That's all going I, I, away. I used to tell people that if you were having a bad day, you know, just take a walk down Market Street from like City Hall down to Penn's Landing, which is like Second Street, and you'll see. <laughs> so like Fifteenth Street to Six to, to Second Street on Market, and you'll see. Tell you what, oh. don't walk. Get one of those e-bikes. Take the Skolko Expressway. Be much safer. You'll see you'll see people missing limbs. People who um, aren't missing limbs who are just like har horrible drug addicts. I mean, I'll have you know when I went to make the music video for the title track for my album with Dead Fella called um, Capitalistocracy. Um, and shout out to James Evan Pilato for putting that on blast on the Media Monarchies. Um, when I went to make the music video for that, the original version of the song, I thought I had found the shittiest sidewalk view driving around of anywhere in the United States, and that was in um, Anaheim County, California, in East Oakland. <laughs> but then... Tony Myers is going off one uh, town hall about how much of a shithole Kensington Avenue in Philly is underneath the elevated, you know, rail line and all that stuff. So it's just dark and damp and there's, they're everywhere. The fucking leg dragon. Um, and so, so I, I, I go and look at some videos. Sure as fucking shit. Blue fucking Oakland away. And then I was like, I think Oakland's what? got it beat now, though. <clears throat> they took the title back. Oh yeah, yeah. Like nobody, well, they, nobody wants to be in Oakland anymore. They, there was like a not whole, even the criminals. They, there was ah. a whole like underworld on the uh, train tracks, the uh, Conrail train tracks. Yeah, that go through there. They had like built like a city down there. And at like some point years ago, they went down there and they made everybody leave and they uh, put these big fences up to keep people from going down there. Now the only thing down in that valley is the people who are like scrap metal and um, all the shit they steal. They like break all the plastic off and throw it down in that valley and they take the scrap metal to the scrap place. It's right there in Kensington. Wow. Yeah, when, yeah, when I was watching those scenes from Kensington Avenue in Philadelphia there under the, um, uh, what's it called, SEPTA, underneath the SEPTA line, Southeast Pennsylvania Transit Authority. Um, and, uh, you know, the video <clears throat> that I clipped out was like almost seven minutes long, and I shrunk it down to just three minutes long to speed it up. And even with it sped up that much, they still look like they're in slow motion. These people that are on the sidewalk, but you can tell that you're, you're going saying, faster because of, you know, the the posts flying by from the elevated train. You know, you know that you're just going by fast, but then when you look at the people that you're passing, they're like literally moving in super duper Norman Finkelstein slow motion. You're you just know getting the, ex the, the exploitative view. It's so. all... You get on YouTube. There's that dude who did the Channel Five documentary who went down and actually talked to the real people. Most of the people going down there, they're just like doing, like you said, they're doing like the uh, drive-by camera, like look at this horrible shit. They don't talk to the people. Oh yeah, yeah. I was just uh, scrolling through all of the drive-by driver POV videos of what you see on both sides as you just drive down the street, whatever city it may be. Because I like those videos, too, of, you know, interviewing people and stuff like that. I've used that on songs, too, but that's more like a ballad or something, I guess. The point of capitalistocracy talking about the decay. You want to go down to Kensington, come on down. If you want to come on up, I'll, I'll take you to Kensington. It's not as much fun. It's not as much fun as it looks like on video. 
I saw the video <laughs> and everything, and you know, I believe I would want to see Camden first. Camden's not as much fun as it looks, but it's not. I all that stuff I, is. I mean, is, South is, Camden. Is, South it's, Camden. It's, Camden. All that's going to be <laughs> gentrified. I guarantee in ten years, yeah. it's all going to be taken over. Because they're they're already just, gentrifying it. They're they're putting fucking roundabouts all over that fucking shit. They're going nuts with that. Yeah, I can tell you right now, if you see them building one of those roundabouts in your street, oh, you're no. fucked. You're yeah. fucked. You are <clears throat> fucked. They're about to give it a new fucking cute little name for the neighborhood, like like um foo bar or whatever. Oh, go check out the foo bar at the roundabout. That's the hip part. They've got a Starbucks, you know. Fuck yeah, that. They even did that to Fairfax, man. Yeah. I was surprised. They, they, I was like, holy shit, they put one of those here? Oh, this place was already gentrified. What? What? They have been trying to revitalize Camden my whole life. And there's all kinds of companies that uh, force their employees to go work in Camden. But most of those companies, they, they don't. They, they force their companies to train their replacements in some foreign country. And the corporate headquarters stays there for tax breaks because that's how the state works. They give you tax breaks to put your business and your uh, workers at risk to go work there. I don't know. I think if I had to incorporate as a corporation, I would use the same <laughs> P.O. box as the other 585,000 corporations registered in Wilmington, Delaware. But that's I'm just me. I was going to say Wilmington, Delaware. You got it. <laughs> Yona knows. Probably get back yeah. so hard on the regular. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I wish you knew how to get part of that club that could get me a uh, PO box there. But well, first you have thing. to be a member of the certified <laughs> investor class. That's actually a thing. Mm -hmm. Actually, a the thing. certified investor class. That's yeah. right. Tell me yeah. more, Mister Yona. Oh, she only oh. got you a lot of good ideas. Oh wait, wait a second. You know what? I'm going to go to an actual reference here since it's Friday. We're going to we're going to source this up like it's Last American Vagabond. Or uh, let me see here. Wait, what was I looking for again? Uh, certified w. Investor Class. Thursday, yeah. Yeah. Damn, I'm Which is actually a thing, believe it or I, not. I'm, I'm sort of fried. <laughs> oh, I. What is there's, still there's, Friday? For a couple more down. hours. It it's is too late. For, Not where it's Rob is. Where where Rob is, it's almost Saturday. Where I am, actually, where Yona is, it's almost Saturday. You only you got less than an hour. Yona's Yona's on the Eastern time board. I know, but he's in that that weird like quasi location where it it okay. really could go either way. <laughs> if he wants to drive a little to the west, maybe. Yeah. Let me see if I can't share this. We've done this before. Screen share, and let's go to the Securities and Exchange Commission dot uh, Yep, there it is, Major Hyona, and there is the page. All right, so let's see. According to official sources, then the guy who set him on self on fire just talk about cryptocurrencies being a uh, fraud too. <laughs> okay, so according to the United States Security and Exchange Commission, a member of the certified investor class known as an accredited investor, how can individuals qualify as accredited? Individuals, i.e. natural persons, may qualify as accredited investors based on wealth and income thresholds as well as other measures of financial sophistication. Mm, yummy. Financial criteria, net worth over $1 million, excluding primary residence, individually or with spouse or partner. Not necessarily human. Am I right, Shank Uger? Income over $200,000 individually or $300,000 with spouse or partner in each of the prior two years and reasonably expects the same for the current year. Professional criteria. Oh, look, we got the piggy bank here. Now we're going to the to the night. 
That's the one that moves in the L shape on the chessboard if you're taking notes. Uh, investment professionals in good standing holding the well, and I'm sorry, in good standing holding the General Securities Representative License, Series Seven. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Blah 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 blah. Well, well, how can entities qualify as accredited? But you, you mean I can get my cock accredited here? Well, it makes me feel okay. better that if my if kids you, killed me right now, that they would be qualified. I if mean, you until own they went to jail. investments in excess of $5 million, mm -hmm. or if you have assets in excess of $5 million, or all these other perks for the super fucking rich. Surprise, yep. motherfucker. Anyways. I, I know people that have their Series 7. <laughs> I actually contemplated getting mine. <laughs> Wow. You're saying I'm not in the group? <laughs> you and you and <laughs> you and George Carlin are both uh, telling me I'm not in this crowd. Yeah. Yeah. I think I it's, I, I knew uh, it it's a real I, thing. I know it before you guys told me. US Securities was, and Exchange Commission. There you go, folks. Yeah. I grew up dirt poor, so I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't have any expectations, but apparently I got some kind of privilege that I didn't know. <laughs> That's what people tell me anyway. Well, you, you've got that dreaded white privilege, Rob. <clears throat> so what it is? Hey, yeah. if you're, I, I, I just want to let people know, if, if you're one of those regular working folks in, a, in America and you're trying to pay off these bills and trying to pay up these credit cards because Equifax and uh, what is it? Uh, TransUnion and what's the other one? Um, Experian or yeah, and there's like three major credit rating agencies that give you your financial credit score. TransUnion, mm -hmm. Equifax, Equifax and Experian, and Experian. Yeah, I, I was correct. So um, mm -hmm. and uh, well now well, if see, you're now an we're accredited into my wheelhouse, if you're an accredited yeah. investor. <laughs> Fuck all that shit. You're an accredited investor. <laughs> that shit don't apply to you. Uh -uh. You're rich. You don't need them. Yeah. I mean, you can you can still use credit. You still have access to it. Right. You don't really need it. But it's useful. Credit, you know, credit scores are for people that are not accredited investors. See how right. Anyway. Yeah, I can buy anything with credit, but they're going to hunt me down and take it back as soon as I stop paying for it. <laughs> My advice, Yona Pro tip, try being an accredited investor next time. And you ain't got to worry about that shit. You get to borrow money at negative interest. I wish I was like it as well. Yeah, when you're an yeah. accredited investor, you'll be like, yeah, I need to borrow a trillion. Or I'm, I'm, I'm exaggerating. I need to borrow $10 million. And I'll pay you back seven and a half million by the end of the year. Okay, deal. Yeah. Seriously, I I, I wish I was making it up. And then if you're poor, you can go to like a payday loan place. Wait, people actually would take that deal? Yeah, it's like a bank would interest. take that deal. Yeah, it's you, you you're doing a negative interest loan to an accredited investor, so it's all good. Negative interest means that as the debt accrues, it's less and less every day that you owe. Correct. You have, yeah. Correct. The interest Instead actually of, reduces the principal. Right. Yeah. And so that's how you end up only paying seven million for the ten million you borrowed. But if you're poor, you go to your payday loan place and you have to put another two hundred dollars out of your paycheck. I got to go to the bank and well, try that. Roll over your payday loan from last week. And so well, then finally out of your, your weekly earnings of about $400, you're only actually keeping $150. So now you're trying to live off of $600 a month to cover all your expenses because over half your money is going to a payday loan place because you have no credit. Again, yell a pro tip, be an accredited investor. All right, that's all I got to say. About it. It's not financial advice. It's the hellscape reality. Anyway, I don't know. I learned. I think I. I think I figured out when I was like twenty. 
um, money will make more money for you than your extra labor will. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's, it's a matter of having that extra money on hand that is in uh, feeding you and housing you and all that other stuff. So good that, luck it's, with that. It's what I like to call some delicious capital gains. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Or, you know, you could just, you know, do wage slavery again. Sell your soul for an hour at a time. Well, I mean, or, that uh, is the popular right. choice. <laughs> you know, that's what the majority of people they, opt for. They've, they've stolen, like, home ownership from young people. <laughs> yeah, no well, doubt. Just rent forever. What's, what is the, uh, <laughs> what's, what's the average price for a uh, U.S. home? Something like $350,000 or something ridiculous like I think that? It's, I think it's even higher than that because I saw something in the last week that was saying that people who are now making like minimum six figures, like 100K, 110 a year, they're being priced out of the housing market now. Because you can't compete when banks are the number one landlord. There's no way to compete because you, you've you already gotten no. rid of Glass-Steagall. So now investment banks get to play with all of Saver's money because now there's no disambiguation between savings and investment and um we're just flying right into the fucking wall i i can't believe we haven't hit the wall yet i i got bad news for you that's the only thing that's left in the united states is actual physical property because everything else has been sold on you yeah and and you know the shit hits the fan when the bond apocalypse goes down when we lose the bond market, that's all she wrote. That's that's again back to Blues Brothers. That's like the moment you park the Blues Mobile and get out mm. and turn around and look at it, and then snap a finger. Every single quarter panel falls off. Little thing just literally just fucking disintegrates right there on the fucking curb. I don't think it's going to happen. I don't know. They've. Uh, I I think that they've. Uh, dumbed people down and gave them too many distractions to make them even notice. I think we're in an idi- <laughs> idiocracy kind yeah. of phase of shit. Yeah, I think really. they can yeah. they can literally get away with whatever they want because they know that the public is in in no way, shape, or form going to do anything about it. I mean, after after what we've witnessed the last four years, and and there aren't people, you know, storming the federal government buildings in in the District of Criminals. Hey, if your team loses in in like a meaningless playoff game, they're going to get booed. But these politicians, they they can just totally ruin your actual real life. Dude, they, they, they already get know away what will with cause. murder on a daily basis, and the public allows it. <laughs> they why, know what. Why will do you cause need to crash revolution. that system? They don't. they know what will set the people off. They know what will cause instant revolution. It's already happened before when the drive-through ran out of chicken, and they'd well, been advertising the chicken, and they ran out of the chicken, and the shit literally hit the fan. People were driving their cars through the fucking glass. I mean, I mean, boondocks immortalized it in cartoon world. And so, you know, if if they somehow fuck up and keep people from getting their fucking McFood and their McBreakfast from the fucking McDrive through lane, then it's going to affect people enough. Then it's going to be in your face. If I can't get my fucking biscuit before I go pick cotton all day for the master, now I'm mad. Now it's fucking with me. Okay, what what if gas is twelve dollars a gallon? Me personally, now, is when they uh, that, that tax, would be pitches and torch forks. Or you think? When they tax when they try to tax my fucking tea, you know what I'm saying? When they put extra tax on my tea, that's that's it for me. <laughs> oh, Rob, I, I'm I'm very sad to be the one to tell you, but uh, we got a whole lot more than tea tax. And there is a tea tax as well. Ask Lipton. Um, way, I mean, and then you've got your 
municipal um, sales tax and your county sales tax and your state sales tax. Um, then you've got your federal excise tax. Mm-hmm. Uh, if Canada uh, has a carbon tax. If it's cigarette or um, tobacco, then, you know, um, ATF also has a federal um, tobacco excise tax because, you know, the T and the the T and the ATF actually stands for tobacco, strangely enough. Um, And the A stands for alcohol. Um, But anyways, isn't it interesting how those thing those three things go together? Beer, cigarette and a gun. Yeah. All right. Here's your badge. (laughs) I, I, as someone who's been a productive worker in this uh, slave system my whole life, I don't know. I <laughs> wait a second. Year, Wasn't I, Len Horiuchi the sniper guy for the uh, ATF? The one that was shooting at uh, was it Randy Weaver there at Ruby Bridge? If you play the game, you got to go through their stupid system and like. Uh, put things in for extra deduction so that you don't owe me even more of your wages. File at a loss. Hmm. Well, and then overvalue your real estate, right? Mar-a-Lago. I mean, Trump <laughs> speaking. Hey, everybody of, does. It. Everybody does. It. Yeah. I, I don't want to tell anybody how to do it, but be an independent entity. Um, if you want to work for somebody on their books, then you're going to suffer all those things that the slave system has for you. And so, every year when you when you, you go to uh, settle up with the fucking master, you might find <laughs> that uh, you took too many cookies or <laughs> extra things onto your tab that uh, they didn't approve of, and you're going to have to give them a little extra more money. And you better give the IRS that extra money because they got firearms too. And otherwise and lots and lots of bullets <laughs> yeah otherwise that, too. <laughs> otherwise that property you thought you fucking owned they're gonna come take it from you oh eventually yeah it's it's like well, that's, why, that's why you have guns because you know they're, they're coming gonna, eventually yeah they're gonna they're gonna post your stuff with the local uh sheriff sale and have your uh, neighbors bid on it and then as you're still living there they're going to bring the sheriffs in and take you and drag you off of your site. You know, you, that's going to be the most watched <laughs> season of Pawn Stars ever when they get done filming that season. Wow. Neighborhood Pawn! <laughs> yes! Sheriff sale. I, I mean, I think that's better than uh, the whole, what's that, the uh, Storage Wars things? Yeah, you can bring in Dog the Bounty Sheriff. Hunter on that. Send Dog the Bounty Hunter to get that fucking armoire and Sheriff Sale. (laughs) These people thought they actually owned this property, but they were just renting it. Dog the Bounty Hunter, how could you do that? That was my grandma's favorite tchotchkes, you asshole. (laughs) Wow. Anyway. So uh, Rob, I, I, I watch a lot of American pickers. I'm sorry. I can see that. It it really it translates. It comes across. So, Rob, um, you've been saying for a while that the the people who are protesting things, just their their heart's not really in it. You can tell. (laughs) (laughs) So this this dude outside. This motherfucker just, you know, one-upped me. Like, I I made some comment on a... (laughs) Now, if you want to, you want to impress me with your your protesting, set yourself on fire, and that's why I feel obligated to read this guy's whole fucking manifesto. And I mean, sorry, I'm in the modern generation. I'm like fucking speed reading your shit, and I'm looking through it, and I'm like, yeah, you, you got some legitimate concerns, but you're fucking batshit crazy on top of it. Like some of the shit, you, you just don't have any foundation for it. You listened to um, Alex Jones and thought that he was telling you the truth, and like, turns out that no, nah, dude, you shouldn't have set yourself on fire over uh, Donald Rob, Trump getting uh, tried for any crimes. The dude's a fucking lunatic. He's he's a professional wrestling bad guy, Hall of Famer. What, why did I he checked. set himself on fire? What was he protesting? He had a manifesto, apparently, and he wanted you to pay attention. 
without killing people, except himself. Ex- <laughs> except maybe himself. I don't know. Is he still except alive? I, I mean, to be honest, if I had like said, "Hey guys, I want you to read this shit," maybe like you know, you guys might have read it and you'd be like, "Rob, I don't know why you killed yourself over that dumb shit." But uh, wow. <laughs> Right, like he had he had a stub substack, so he was writing and he was putting stuff out there. Like, was it, is this to get more eyes on his substack? Is this like some some sort of weird promotional stunt? I mean, it's an end game, isn't it? <laughs> I never heard of his substack. I mean, I heard of it now, and I read his his uh, ramblings. You know, I can't agree 100% of what the stuff I've seen. I haven't read the whole thing. Mm. Damn it. Now I'm going to have to read this shit. I, I'm a busy guy. I don't have time to read for everybody. That's what I'm saying. I got, I've got like a whole menu of media <laughs> to consume in front of me. Like, I don't have time to be adding just like random wackos ramblings onto it. I gave him as much, uh, <laughs> I don't know authority as somebody setting themselves on fire deserves or <laughs> uh, drizzle if you look there i've pulled up something else to share with you that oh, was, goodness uh, brought to my attention by radio 8424 in the chat and again shout out to studio 8424 for rebroadcasting some grand theft world liberty radio good look home oh hell yeah um and uh and it was a link to this article talking about um, the floor action response team of the Freedom Caucus, uh, F-A-R-T, also known as Fart. Fart. <coughs> Freedom I mean, Caucus Fart Group. Fart Group. Wow, yes, tensions um, are simmering. It's getting serious. That's right. Hardliners in the House Freedom Caucus have activated their floor action response team, also known as BART. You know, if to that woman were attractive, she would be revolution. dangerous. I'm sorry, go ahead. Say, let's, let's uh, Karen let's, as their spokesman. They're carefully monitoring for any surprise resolutions aimed at sabotaging them, as us for me with me and the past. Thought entails Freedom Caucus members taking turns on the lookout for unannounced resolutions that congressional leadership could pass via unanimous consent to sidestep any hurdles from the rabble rousers. Amid the fervor over whether the hard right flank will try to oust Speaker Mike Johnson, Republican from Loserina, uh, there have been some calls for retaliatory or defensive measures from the traditionalist Republican faction. Look out for fart. I, I smell it. I don't even like pay attention to this dumb yeah. shit anymore. Like, this, <laughs> I, no. I, I, it, it still gets brought to my attention, but at the same time, like, who gives a fuck? These clowns. I love all these pop up ads. Nice look, New York Post. Wow. Yeah, that's classy, New York Post. Nice, nice. nice. Flash. Why don't we just. Well, dump that's this exactly down. right, Rob. A lot of flash to get your attention. You know, and just get you looking all over the place. Well, Thank I, you, uh, Ryan King, for that. Wow. I, wow. I use the Microsoft browser for work because it just works I'm so better sorry. for it, it works better for all the applications. And they have this like home news feed that no matter like a Back in the old days, you used to be able to like redirect, so you didn't have to see their nonsense. But now they've like integrated it, so like if you want to use their browser, you have to put up with their stupid news feed. And it, it's like all these like stupid headlines. Every one of them, like you know what the news is, but they try to sensationalize it with the uh, headline for the articles, and it's so dumb. That reminds me of those that's, that's, awesome that's news the world we've on moved Grand into. Theft Auto. Whenever you're playing the Grand Theft Auto and you've got the Grand Theft Auto radio stations on and they'll have news blurbs come on. Love that shit. Love how, that how, shit. Long, 
how long has it been now that um, every news article is uh, an advertisement? Oh, Just like yeah. Grand Theft Auto? Native advertising all up in them fucking ads. Yeah, it's well, probably, I mean, probably already- about 10 years now. <laughs> and you yeah. have to look carefully because you get to the end of the article and then it'll say, this is a paid advertisement of. And you're like, whoa, I, whoa wait. What? I, I, I think that somehow the um the slimy congress and the president you know put their fucking signature on a bill because on that microsoft browser that i'm talking about like they have all those catchy headlines on things but it has ad if you look um Mm -hmm. and don't just like spontaneously click on it i just use it because it uh you know, connects to all the applications I need to connect to without any issues. Uh-oh. Did we lose Yona? We we lost him off the video anyway. Yeah. I don't know what happened. I thought we were having a good time. I don't know. Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> We must have upset him somehow. I don't know. I don't think so. I don't no. think he did go to, more likely to go to the bathroom. I don't think there's anything contentious going on there. Oh shit. He we is, can get up and go to the bathroom. It, he is very uh I think he's still connected. He's very anyway. authoritarian uh programmed, so you never know. Hmm. With the owner. Structure is great, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So what else is on your mind? Uh, on tonight? my mind? Shit. Uh, I I need a vacation from my vacation. That's yeah. what's been is on my anything, mind. Yeah. Is there anything fun on your vacation? Uh, not really. Mostly worked. Disconnect. Yeah. Well, on your vacation, I had a like fun vacation. I went up, I saw uh, some museums in uh, the Queens and in Manhattan. Hung out in Bronx in uh, Brooklyn for a night. So nice. What was that? That was like? some fun. It's pretty cool. We went to the. Uh, there he is. Oh shit! He's back. Some sort of wish, witchcraft yeah, going on here. I, I heard all kinds of furor uh, in the neighboring room where all my kids are sleeping, and I got kids puking, and, and so I just went over there and was helping. And so, I'm, unfortunately, I got to hop off here because I, I, I've got a situation going on right now. Because one pukes, and then two pukes, and then three are puking, and all right, yep. Yeah, so, uh, anyway, to your thanks, daddy duties. Thanks, right. thanks for having me uh, on here again, guys. Hey, Sean. I'll, I always love kicking it with you too, Rob. Um, and I'll, I'll catch up with you tomorrow night. Uh, Driss, see you guys. Right on. Good evening. And that's probably a, a good time to uh, remind folks that tomorrow night we will be back doing the normal Saturday night thing. And it will be 420 themed. Uh, so, I mean, you can go ahead and send in. Uh, more requests if you want to, but the we've already got the playlist ready, and it's going to be a good one. Uh, I can guarantee you that. You do not want to miss this one for your holiday listening pleasure. How many hours are you going tomorrow, Drizzle? Uh, the normal. It'll be the, the two-hour show and the one hour beforehand. Nice. Yeah. But it'll be the Smoke More the Weeds edition of Two Hours from the Vault. And so then that means that that everything that gets played tomorrow night that wasn't already in the vault, because again, it's it's all going to be marijuana themed, that all goes in the vault now. So it'll pop up again at some point in the future. It's a nice little machine I've built. I dig it. Yeah, I definitely enjoy the uh, the different eclectic uh, music collection. That's a good word to describe it. Eclectic. Absolutely. That makes it sound less crazy. 
<laughs> more Absolutely. sophisticated. You know, there, there's definitely songs I've taken off of that and mixed into my uh, my daily not not so much daily, but put into my playlist that pop up here and there. Nice. That's what it's there for. That's I, I actually hope that that's what most people get out of all the nonsense that, that I throw at you. It's just like new music that you didn't hear before. And you're like, oh, wow, that's good. Yeah, most of the I'll good music, of you're not, most of the good music, you're not going to hear it on the radio. And no. un- unfortunately, the people making it aren't making money off of it. And the, the pennies they are, it's, it's all like local performances. My, uh, girlfriend's daughter she's a musician and she's she's awesome she's a great performer and if you go see her in person it's like this is great but i don't know if you got to sell yourself to the devil uh or or meet the right people (laughs) i think that is it exactly I i think you have to sell your soul to the devil in order to be successful in in any form of entertainment doesn't matter what it is like the, even even if you start organically and you build your own thing, there comes a time where you attract the attention of the power structure. And so you get a visit and you, you get offered a deal. Yeah. I don't know. She's, uh, she's been working in New York. She, uh, she's been from the area I'm in and moved up to New York with her husband. I think it was like two years now, two years, eh, two years ago now, and uh, she's been booking different acts for places as part of her job, and she's met some connections, and she's had uh, I can't even remember who it was, but it was some some band that's uh, you know on the radios now <laughs> was uh, backing her for her her vocal singing her songs and recording and nice still not able to like make a breakthrough so she's discouraged but she's definitely got the vocal talent all right hmm. no. of course lady, lady gaga had to sell herself to say satan she was a great performer who could not get anywhere until she started <laughs> singing for Satan, I guess. Yeah. Now, I remember uh, we had, when I was working at H.H. Gregg 10 years ago, and we had the, the, the beautiful wall of flat screen TVs in the back of the store with the nice 90-inch sharp as the centerpiece, they would send us uh, promotional media to play on the screens instead of paying for like uh, cable and, and that sort of shit. We just, it was all promotional stuff. Um, and especially on the big screen, it was like advertising all the shit we were selling. It was great for a salesman. Um, but one of the things that was on the promotional disc was Lady Gaga uh, doing in concert. I don't even remember what the song was, uh, but it was a torch song and she was like, you know, all in the, the black sequins with the, um, the black fishnet stockings. And I mean, fantastic performance. It was absolutely yeah. wonderful performance. Yeah, nothing, her voice, you can't, nothing you like can't, what she's known for at all. You can't take away her talent. I mean, she, she's doing like a shtick and, you know, playing for Satan and wearing meat suits and whatever the fuck it is to everybody else but like she had talent way before that <laughs> yeah it's a shame it really is but i guess we all gotta eat right yeah so I guess sooner so. or later you you gotta let uh diddy get behind you i guess i don't know that seems to be a story that kind of like disappeared there's, there's like people on the uh I guess on the in the now who are still talking, but it yeah, hasn't there's made still the, people the mainstream it. at all. Yeah, have well, have you heard? 
I, I can't, who, who's that woman? I can't remember her name, but I've seen her talking about him. Ah, you're going to have to narrow it down. Because <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, so, there's more women in the media than there used to be. Yeah. It'd be like, there's oh, some... I know who you're talking about, Barbara Wawa. I don't know. The shit, I, I don't really even pay attention to it. No. No, I don't, I don't think we've heard the last of the Diddy saga. <clears throat> I think there's more coming. Uh, especially now, finding out that it, it, a lot of it was, wasn't necessarily about him, but about his son and like charges that his son is facing. Because uh, apparently his, his, fun was, his son was following in his father's footsteps. You know, getting in on the Man. family business, you know. One day he's going to take over the legacy of Diddy. So he thought, anyway. Yeah, yeah, so they thought. What do you think uh, made him fall out of favor? Just too many uh, allegations. Probably tried to fuck didn't... somebody he shouldn't have. <clears throat> if I had to guess, yeah, he, he probably tried to force himself on, on somebody that he shouldn't have, and this is his punishment. I wouldn't say, you know, anything, you know, definitive to put it in the press or anything, but it seems like the, he uh, started a relationship with uh, some gay dude, um, Clive Owen, was, was that the guy's name? Okay. And that's how he uh, became prominent. All of a sudden he wasn't performing anymore. Now he was the big producer. And then, who knows? I, 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 I've seen some of the videos that have popped out. I don't pay attention to the entertainment. I give a fuck about that stuff. But uh, that pop culture stuff is uh, seems to be where the devil lives. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. The I wouldn't argue did. with that at all. <clears throat> I mean, the, the, the stuff that you see uh, released with the videos with him and um, Justin Bieber, holy Christ. Yeah. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Pun yeah, intended. I'm sure. Because sure. the, the thing about it is what I don't think dawns on most people is that this is not the exception. This is actually the rule in the industry. Well, <clears throat> like the, I, he's not the only one. Well, I'm, right? I'm sure. I'm sure you, you're you're exactly the same age as I am. So I'm sure you've seen it where it's like all of a sudden we got these, you know, people who are like the squares. Now everybody's like, you know, hep all of a sudden, you know, saying mm -hmm. fucking the bullshit lingo of the time, and you know now there's somehow being excluded from what's happening. <laughs> yeah. So because they're, they're fucking playing make-believe. Yeah. I don't know. It is a clown fucking world we're living in. It is. That's for sure. It is. And, when, and sometimes it's when entertaining. You, when, when you see the, uh, the Congress critters up there on TV, playing make believe and trying to like attack people who have truth on their side. It's, you know, regardless of it's uh, fake screenshots and not actual source documentation, just the fact that they're like up there talking confidently, trying to um, attack people with truth. She was all in fucking trouble hmm. <laughs> for, for playing, for paying any attention to them. Well, I don't know, because I've listened to some of like the the proceedings from the the church committee and and uh, what were the other? There's a couple other prominent committees in Congress in the '70s that were investigating uh, the Supposed intelligence to reel in the agencies. CIA. Yeah, and. <clears throat> Some of those people who were asking questions during those committee hearings 
don't seem to have been much smarter than what we have in DC today. So nah. it just kind of seems like it's the same game that just keeps getting played over and over and over again. Oh, who was that guy? Um, he was the Republican who they asked him. Um, and he, he was the, he was handicapped. Ah, can't remember his name. Um, I think he was from North Carolina or South Carolina. He was one, he was from one of the Carolinas. He was a Republican and they were interviewing him and he had said that, you know, he had, talking about the parties that those people get invited to and how there's oh, uh, Cawthorn. Cawthorn. Yeah. Exactly. Cawthorn. That was the name. It was on the tip of my tongue. I I absolutely believe that's the, the way. And like I'm sure if like Epstein wasn't the thing that got people, people like Diddy. Like I was saying, like you're the hip new guy here. Come to a party with uh P. Diddy. Just to show you're not a racist, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, but they were Next. they again, they were doing that stuff, you know, back in in the the thirties and the forties and the fifties, too. Yeah, I mean like Alan well, Dulles is a perfect example. You know, Laurel keeping Canyon. keeping mistresses uh, all over the fucking world while, you know, he's a fine upstanding American citizen at home. As long as you're doing what the power structure wants you to do, he was never in charge of anything. He was just a secret keeper. He was the one pulling the strings, and uh, he knew it only at any moment his whole like gig could be exposed. So that's. But it never was. People, he never found I, himself in a ditty position. It, it sounds dumb and conspiratorial, but like the people who are pulling the strings, you may never hear their names. Like, you know, families, you know, this and that, and you can try to ascertain like which one of these families is still pulling the strings on the shit that's been set in motion for all these years. But I, I don't think you really know the people still here. <clears throat> I don't think a media would let you know. No. No, because they're they're paid to make sure that we don't know. That's yeah. that's what their whole job is all about. Yeah, to Keep find some some like fake family to uh, be angry at the Rothschilds or the uh, Rockefellers. Be angry at them. They're the ones who fucked it all up, but. The power. Yeah, we, don't, is, we don't hear a whole lot about the Sassoons anymore, do we? Nah. Or the uh, Montefiores. Don't hear even much about them at all. The Fords or. Yeah. I mean, they still, they still have a car company, but what else are they doing? The Carnegies, the Mellons. But their foundations still live on mm -hmm. somehow and have influence. Yeah, Ford Foundation is one of the most influential institutions in the entire world. Right up until this very day. I mean, <clears throat> last I heard, there was some like 98-year-old woman who was the, uh, the matriarch of the Ford Foundation, right? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. They, they destroyed she may, she may have passed the away. Ford Motor Company. Terrible, oh, Reich, terrible what they did to Henry Ford. The Fourth Reich is here, as far as I oh, yeah. noticed. And they were a big supporter of the third one. Well, I mean, we were, I think we were saying that last night on, on Get Fact Harder. Uh, Germany lost World War II. The Nazis won. The Nazis won. And everybody else got fooled. Yeah. I mean, they transferred either here, like the the engineering part of it transferred to America for the most part. And we gave like the fake foil part to the Soviet Union. 
Yeah. Which, which itself was a creation of the Western banking interest. Yeah, I mean, we need, we need a bad guy. Keep everybody, everybody motivated, apparently. It's just dumb. What is there, like 5,000 uh, inventions they've seized in America for national security interests? I wouldn't be surprised if it's more than that, honestly. I think the last I saw was like 5,200, but... Uh, it makes me wonder what life could actually be like if we weren't under such a, a tyrannical control structure already with one that apparently is going to be even worse on the way. Like, well, it, If you have some idea of creating some new technology that's going to make you um, one of these oligarchs, I got bad news for you. The, the best thing to do if you have that engineering capability is just to release it for free to everybody. Yeah. Yeah. That really is the only option. Just give it away yeah. to everybody. That's what, uh, that's what Linus Torvald did. Came up with an alias and just... Um, is that really him now? The guy who created Linux? Does it matter? I, I'm, I mean, as an IT guy, I know a lot of people have uh, seized the whole, you know, open source idea and put a support mechanism around it where they have a business entity that runs around supporting the kernel of that operating system. So. How free it is? I have no idea. Maybe it's uh, no freer than the tour system. Hmm. Good point. <clears throat> I, <clears throat> I think it honestly. I think it's all walled gardens at this point. I think just like everything else for for the rank and file, uh, for the common man, like everything has a ceiling on it. And you have to be allowed to go further than that. Yeah, unless your technology is newer than the existing technology. That's always what spurred technology. Somebody making something that uh, surpasses the current. So, in this uh, new, new uh, configuration clown world, I don't know. They, they have a lot of creation stories of people with these uh, applications that have changed people's lives that uh, seem a little more controlled than people want to believe. Life Log and Facebook kind of seem to <laughs> correlate. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of corollaries there. And especially yeah. watching the the changes that have unfolded in society after the advent of social media. It's unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Yeah, I think it's been like eight plus years since I've been on Facebook. I, I thought it was a, like a cool thing. Back when I first started. Well, it was know. a cool thing when, you know, it rebranded from LifeLog and became Facebook for those first few, you know, four or five, six years, maybe. Yeah, it was cool because it was new. It was novel. Yeah, it was something to connect with people that, like, you were uh, friendly with, passed through your life, you, you know, didn't have their connection because you didn't have cell phone numbers back in those days. I got... Uh, in contact with some people, you know, from my past, it was pretty cool. But um, the whole concept of it, like just watching you and the people who were like fanatical with it, check in here, check in there. I, <laughs> I'm not that person. So like I, I saw all that stuff and I was like, this is uh, a little bit intrusive. 
And then even when I stopped doing it, like I still have a Facebook profile that has never gone away. Like I've been divorced for five years, but if you look at my Facebook profile, still got a picture of my ex-wife and my kids on it. <laughs> Give a fuck. Nice. Frozen in time. I like Frozen it. in time. All right, <clears> Rob. <throat> I'm going to let you off the hook. Another uh, open lines has come to an end. And uh, we'll see everybody tomorrow night.